All right, imagine now you are in a building. Let's say you are on the 11th floor of a building. You are there because of work. Then the alarm goes off. The alarm signifies everyone needs to leave the building. So you expect that chaos all over the place. You expect that people to run all over one another to leave the building, but no. There are several fire escapes built in the building. They were designed by the architects who designed the building decades ago. So everyone has walked towards the fire escapes and people swiftly run out of the building. And everyone is safe. In this case, there was a secured escape. The escape was organized. Why? Because when the buildings, while well, the building was designed, the architect took into consideration that accidents may happen and that fires may occur. So in the design of the building, the architect, that's decades ago, designed a me method for people to to escape in a safe way. A building without any secured escape designed into it is a building you should avoid. As simple as that. Now, when it comes to our physical safety, it is quite important that there are secured escapes. Whether it's a building with a fire escape or whether it's you are on a ship and the ship is sinking and now you have uh, life vessels or whether it's you are in a helicopter and now you, you have a parachute just in case a secured escape is handy and in some cases even necessary sometimes if you don't have a secured escape in place you can even be sued or prosecuted for, for neglect. So, when it comes to our fiscal safety, we want to be able to get out of a situation in case of imminent danger. And that's a good thing. However, there is a dark side to this longing for secured escapes. Anytime you long for a secured escape, if there is no imminent danger, that is when you are now operating out of attachment. And that's something psychological. What is attachment? Attachment simply means you are invested in an outcome. You are holding on to an outcome. It can be that you, let's say you move to, new, to a new place and you walk around in the street of your neighborhood and there are certain people you instantly feel connected to and there are other people you simply don't feel talking to. And outsiders see your behavior and they notice that all the people you end up talking to are people who are similar to the folks you grew up with in a previous living place. You were raised and shaped a certain way by your parents and the people around you. So you got exposed to certain expectations. And because those expectations were all you knew, you developed attachment. You became invested. You began to identify yourself with those expectations. Maybe the expectation is, that by age 30, you should have it all together in your life. Maybe the expectation was that you should always uh, address people in a formal way unless they consent you to use your first name. Maybe you get annoyed when people just use your first name and you think we're not on first name terms. What's the problem with people using your first name? There's no problem with it. The thing is, you were raised a certain way 
And because there's a multitude of people agreeing with that way of thinking, you think the way of thinking is valid and, and secured. In other words, when many people around you act the same way, you feel safe acting the same way too. Why? Because you want to get along with people around you because you don't want to have interpersonal conflict. Now, if you're just a group of people acting that way, you can still see through it saying it's just an artificial thing that we made up. But when millions of people act in a similar way, it can feel as if it's natural. For example, you can have millions of people in a country and all those millions of people agree with beating your wife to make her validate you. Now, is beating the grown woman that's your sex partner a wise thing to do? No. You cannot build a healthy marriage with violence. It's not going to work. But if millions of people have been doing this, and you have millions of couples getting along with it, you may think, based on the fact that millions of couples get along with this toxicity, that a toxicity is something natural or something necessary in daily life. But just because the appearance is the way, does not mean it is. It can also be that you grew up in a place where people always exploded when they're unhappy. And now you think that people just exploding on you because they're upset is simply communication. But then you go to another country where people have been raised to count to 10 and to leave a situation and then to come back and communicate what they're upset about. So when you go to that other country and you just explode on someone in their face, people think, whoa, what is this? They may even call the cops on you. Even though you didn't physically harm them directly, you did shock them with your behavior. Why? Because you just didn't consider anyone else. You were upset and just acted out. Let everyone know what you think and feel. That's how they do it with you at home. But the way they do it with you at home is dysfunctional and it's even criminal. But because it's something that so many people got attached to, nobody really says anything about it. Or, or maybe the attachment is an, an aversive one. Maybe the attachment is that people are against um, hypocrisy. Now, hypocrisy simply means you play a role in daily life. Aren't we all playing a role in daily life? Can we afford to be transparent 24-7 towards everyone? No, we can't. Even Jesus himself does not recommend you to be transparent 24-7. Even Jesus told you to not cast pearls before swine. So what are we going to do? We have to act and do what's best. A lot of people say do what's right. Always be transparent with everyone else. So everyone knows what they're dealing with, everyone knows how you think and feel. Okay, but being so transparent also will also put you at risk. If everyone knows what annoys you, they also know how to trigger you. And what if you have issues with someone else and you openly expressed it? If later individuals victimized, either they go missing or they got killed or whatever, you are the suspect. It's going to look bad on you. It would have been better for you to face yourself and realize that you are the one with an issue that should protect, protect an other individual. If the other individual is dangerous or dysfunctional, you can address it, but you're not going to develop negative against someone else. What the heck is that? So, attachment simply comes down to you insist on an outcome because that outcome is familiar to you. And because the outcome is familiar to you, you believe that this outcome will benefit you. But here's the thing. The benefit you're looking for is the same familiarity that you invested in it. Or simply said, the outcome you want, you only want it because you were taught by someone else that the outcome is 
preferable and desirable. We as human beings, we are mimetic creatures, we imitate one another. It's through imitation of one another that we learn language, that we learn how to communicate with one another. Socialization happens through imitation, simple as that. However, if we imitate the wrong people, it will go wrong with us. And when we imitate one another, we become similar to one another, which is a healthy thing. But fallen mankind gets uncomfortable when everything is absolutely similar. Then they want to escape from this. Because when everything is 100% similar in how people act, behave, all of that, people are going to feel like they don't matter. At the other hand, when there is no conformity whatsoever, people also feel bewildered. Why is this? Because fallen mankind wants one thing. A secured escape, no matter what. Fallen mankind just wants to go through life without facing any challenges, without dealing with any difficulty, and without being called out on their behavior and without having to explain themselves towards anyone. That is the fairy tale fallen mankind wants. Now, this is a fairy tale because in daily life you cannot get away with just escaping all the time. And you cannot think that just because you're upset or you don't want something, you can just ignore, say no, walk away without having to consider anyone else. Act like that in daily life and you're going to make a lot of enemies and in some cases you'll even be arrested. Because, you don't, because your inconsideration can even cause danger for other people. So, fallen mankind is obsessed with escaping. If everyone escapes their way, you're going to have what they call anarchy. Even though the word anarchy itself is not negative, but what they mean with anarchy is complete ruin. Nobody considers one another. And that's a condition fallen mankind doesn't want. So fallen mankind wants a situation in which they are controlled. They want a controlled situation in which they have a secured escape. That is why worldlings are willing to submit to tyrannical rule. Under a tyrant, you know for sure you're being taken advantage of. But because you're taken advantage of, you now can take the victim role. By take, take on the victim role, you can avoid responsibility and accountability. So that's a way of escaping. Or if there is some maniac in charge of the finances of a, co a community, then everyone can point the finger at that maniac being in charge. And that's why they all can have excuse for their own neglect towards one another. Because fallen mankind is neglectful. The main thing on their mind is to escape. And this dysfunction this, this is why you have all the violence and misfortune on the earth. The only way for this instability to be rectified is when mankind submits to the Heavenly Father and does His will, as simple as that. So there is no choice, there is no option, there is no multiple choice, there is no um, free will. As a human being, you have a will and ability to choose. And this ability to choose will only serve you and others well when your will follows the will of the Heavenly Father. As simple as that. Any other direction your human will takes will be self-destructive and harmful. As simple as that. So outside of doing the will of the Heavenly Father is only instability, misfortune, and self-destruction. As simple as that. Yet fallen mankind does not want to face this. They don't even want to face their own instability, whether as an individual or as a group. So, fallen mankind, again, they want a controlled situation in which they are controlled. And because they are controlled, they can always put the blame and responsibility on the one controlling them. Now, in exchange for being controlled, they now want to take out the pain of being controlled, because when you are being controlled, is a stressful situation. 
but they submit to the stressful situation and as com and as uh, compensation, they don't want to take it out on someone else. That's how fallen mankind operates. That is the pyramid scheme that's been going on since Nimrod established Babylon. That's how they did it in ancient Egypt. That's how they did it in the ancient empires. That's how they're doing it today in every country. Worldlings submit to a stressful regime. And once the regime stresses them out, they want to take it out on people who can't defend themselves. And they come up with an excuse why they're doing that. And that's how they secure their escape. Why do you think you had child sacrifices in the past? Why, when young adults became parents and they realized, man, becoming a parent is uh, not that easy all the time. And you know what? This child will grow up and look at me one time and see how unstable I am. If they want to abandon their children, Ancient cultures offer them a way to abandon their children without being charged. And that is they could offer up one of the children to be sacrificed for the community. Because here's the thing. When those parents cannot escape their pa uh, parenthood, they will develop resentment and they will take it out on the, those, those children. And when they take it out on the children, the children will now look around and realize, don't wait a minute. Why didn't anyone intervene? And now you have grown folks who are traumatized and someone even better at the community. And that's going to turn ugly. So for the community not to face this, they give young adults the option to abandon their children. For example, in some ancient communities, you had a square somewhere. And if a baby was born or if a child was around one or three years old and the parents did not want to continue parenthood, they could drop the child over there and everyone would allow the child to die. Or traffickers would come and put the children in brothels uh, or, or whatever. They offered an escape from the responsibility of parenthood. And that's how many of the adults that grew up realize, ooh, I could have been killed if my parents abandoned me. So they now have the fear of being abandoned by society and this fear motivates them to always please one another. Now, this is not sustainable, but it did work. The community could now avoid dealing with resentful adults who reveal their neglect. Because there's one thing fallen mankind cannot handle, exposure. Fallen mankind cannot handle facing themselves. Nobody wants to face their own deformities and defects. It's a quite a painful thing. And nobody wants to have a mirror in front of them that shows the deformities of everyone around them. It's quite painful and quite humiliating and embarrassing. Nobody wants that. People want to escape from that. That is why in every civilization in human history, there were outlets for violence. When people were upset or when they were bitter or resentful, they were offered victims they could, they could escalate upon. Why? Because when there are in, there are victims around to escalate upon, that means all your negativity flows towards those people, not towards others around you. That's why often when children are abused by their parents, the community does not intervene. Because if community intervenes now, they now have to deal with those parents. And those parents now, because they don't abuse the children anymore, they might, now they may go out and explode on random people in the street. So, that's why this, this code of children honoring their parents unconditionally was introduced in ancient times. Why? Because if your mom or dad neglected you or abused you, and you put up with it, even as a grown man or grown woman, that means the rest of the people are spared from having to deal with that creep amongst them. Everyone else wants to have ease, but it's at your expense. But they're never going to tell you this, that they're just cowards who don't want to deal with stuff. They want to blame you when you want to get out of the abusive situation. 
because they, the community, are part of the abuse situation because they're the ones that keep abuse going by not intervening and by not looking for a solution for you. So they put the blame on you so that they don't have to face themselves. But if you don't fall for it, and you, if you don't fall for it and you confront them, now you've become the unwanted mirror that shows how unstable they really are. And what happens then? When that happens, they turn on you and they want you dead. As simple as that. Fall of mankind wants secured escapes. That is what it's all about. This, this thing, escapism, explains 99% of human behavior in daily life because most people out there are worldly they don't serve Christ uh, they're not doing the will of the Heavenly Father so they are always escaping as simple as that and human communities that don't do the will of the Heavenly Father are always looking for victims to escalate their instability upon as simple as that that is why the world hates Christ and they hate the gospel because the gospel is what exposes their instability it exposes their deformities and it's also limiting the effectiveness of scapegoating and of blood sacrifice but the world cannot function without blood sacrifice without, without blood sacrifice they can't get the ease that they're all craving and without that ease Worldlings lose their minds and things get more violent and things get more dangerous. And when things get more violent and more dangerous, because the worldlings can't release or transfer their negative tension on victims, it's then that it becomes evident that mankind needs the lead of the Heavenly Father. And then people are forced to submit to the Heavenly Father. And those that insist on not submitting ends up destroying themselves. That's the effect of the gospel. So the gospel ends all human excuses and all bail outs. The gospel reveals you, mankind, are created by me and you need my guidance and you're on the earth that belongs to me. And you can't escape my forgiveness nor my guidance. So my forgiveness and guidance will play out and work out forever on the earth despite your rebellion. And only those who eventually submit will benefit from my forgiveness and my guidance forever. The rest ends up making themselves miserable forever. As simple as that. So there is no option, no choice. And no alternative. And that's what the gospel shows people. And that's what angers a lot of folks also about the gospel. That's why worldlings can easily get along with pagan deities from ancient Greece or from other, any other ancient culture that was into either pedophilia or raping people. How come you have a lot of worldly people that are perfectly fine with deities that were rapists and child molesters when it comes to Christ who advocated for the sake of children when it comes to Christ who was lynched just because people want the outlet how come when it comes to Christ who went along doing good how come they all can't get along with Christ because the gospel exposes their own neglect that they don't want to see that is why Secured escapes. Why do people join cults? Because they want to escape loneliness. They want to escape being picked upon. It is a fact. In this world, if you're all by yourself, without any group around you, you can easily be victimized and you can easily fall apart. Because first of all, human beings are not designed to be alone. We're social creatures meant to get along in a group. We get our identity from the group we're involved in. Simple as that. And above that, our identity should come from that Father. Nevertheless, we're designed as social creatures to get along in groups. So psychologically, you are built to be part of a group. As simple as that. Secondly, when you are all by yourself, 
you will face a lot of lack because no human being can fulfill all the human needs all by themselves. It is impossible. And nobody wants to face persistent mental distress. No. So people want, want to avoid all of that. And it's not a wrong one to avoid all of that. But the way they do it is that they want a persistent escape from any difficulty in life. That's why people join cults. Think about it. If you would say that people have the right to beat their children just to escape facing themselves and that others have to allow it to happen, people would look at you and think, what? What do you say? It sounds quite dumb. But if a whole group of people does it, you feel validated. You are more psychologically at ease. Even though the thing you, you agree with, with the group, is completely out of hand. Look, there is power in quantity. And it's power of quantity, that is how the world works. Because much of the behavior, let me say, much of the behavior in daily life, if it would be done by individuals, just individuals, and we observe individuals individually, we think, what the heck is this? But if it's done by a whole group, we think, oh, guess the way it is. There's power in quantity. And that is how the world works. Well, that power of quantity is just the illusion of something being natural, while it's not. Now, the power of quantity can be a good thing, but often it can be a source to cover up the instability of mankind. And the gospel exposes instability and it enforces dissolution during the will of Heavenly Father. So beware with the people you listen to. Because a lot of the, let me say, many of the teachers and preachers out there are just about, are just about offering a secured escape. And I also want you to examine yourself. Do you actually want long-term solutions and long-term benefits? Or do you just want to be certain you can escape without facing any further consequences? What is it? If you only want to escape bad consequences, to be left alone, then you have a lot in common with a narcissist. You may not be a narcissist. Likely not. You may not be a narcissist. You may not be what the Bible calls a reprobate. But if you operate the same way a reprobate does, that means a reprobate has a leverage over you. How can you complain about people being reprobates, but you operate the same way reprobates do, by always chasing escapes? Now, you're not a reprobate because you're not extreme. You do have a natural balance inside of you, something the reprobate has lost over time. So you're not a reprobate, but you do make it easy for reprobates to have a hold on you if you operate in the same dark pattern as a reprobate does. So examine yourselves and forfeit any type of relief seeking. There is one thing to want to relax with other people, it's not wrong with that. But if you insist on escaping every type of challenge or any type of um, difficulty, and by the way, not Every challenge is evil. Some challenges are there to motivate you and shape you for the better. If you are like that, that means that you are digging your own grave. Simple as that. So, do not cling onto secured escapes. Do not follow the will of the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father will not do things on your terms because your terms most likely, are based on escaping. It's by renewing your mind in agreement with Christ that you learn to have an abundant, abundance mindset. We don't have an abundance mindset by birth. It's something that we develop after becoming born again in Christ. Well, that's it for now. Keep on agreeing with Christ and be at peace.